I love drinking. It's one of my favorite pastimes, if not my favorite pastime. The issue is though, is that it takes up a ton of calories. A cold beer is like 150 calories and it takes me six of those just to feel anything. And that's practically a meal, 900 calories, like that. And even if you wanna to switch to a lower calorie option like seltzers or shots, you're still only cutting like 50 calories out of that. So from 900, you're going down to 600. It's not enough. And Lord knows it takes a lot of effort to maintain this figure. Okay? And I thought to myself, if only there was some way that I could get alcohol into my body without using my mouth. Now, I've had a dream. I'd like for you to close your eyes, picture it with me. You walk into a room, it's an all white room, kind of like an Apple store almost. Maybe there's a conversation pit in the center with a couple ABGs in there. And unbeknownst to you, in the back room, there are three alcoholics who are all but divorced insurance salesmen. And these insurance salesmen are violently drunk and in addition are actively drinking. While doing this, they are hooked up to blood bags and being drained. That blood is then taken, processed, and brought to the front room where it is then transfused into other patients so that they can have all the upsides of alcohol, but none of the downsides. And so I have a lot of faith in this dream. I think this is an untapped market. The only right thing to do is to provide a proof of concept. So the plan right now is to get violently drunk. As drunk as I can while maintaining cognitive function, drawing my own blood and then transfusing it back into myself at a later date to see if I feel tipsy or anything like that. But first, let's do a quick hematology lesson. So blood is a pretty interesting thing. It's kind of like the magic fluid that moves everything in our body. There's the phrase, we all kind of bleed together or we all bleed the same. We don't all have the same blood. There are multiple different blood types inside different people. And these blood types are basically broken into what I like to think is two subgroups. There's a letter component and then there's also a, I guess, mathematical component for lack of a better term. Basically, you can be either type A, type B, type AB, or you can be type O. And all this type means is it determines what antigens and antibodies you have in your body. Uh, think of it kind of like all the cells in your body kind of has a, have a wristband, like you're trying to go to an event or a concert. Those wristbands essentially are antigens. And then there are antibodies going around the concert or the event, scanning the wristbands to make sure that you're supposed to be there, that you're in the right area. And so that's kind of what the letter component is. And then similarly, the mathematical component, which basically just means positive or negative. There's another protein that just basically labels it as either plus or minus. Let's say you and another person are type A. If you're a positive and he's a negative, your blood's not gonna be compatible. If the A negative gets injected into you, you're gonna have an allergic reaction, the blood's gonna clot, all sorts of bad things are gonna happen. For what we're doing, we can just ignore that. Because <laughs> uh, it's my own blood, I'm not gonna have an allergic reaction to my own blood. With the exception of maybe blood poisoning. <laughs> if I don't store the blood correctly or if some sort of negative interaction happens, it's entirely possible that the blood can get sour, can go rotten, can go bad, and then it poisons the rest of the blood, and then it becomes very, very bad, and it's not good. That's probably not gonna happen. <laughs> um, I got a cold fridge, you know? Of the many things to worry about, really the most scary is embolisms. An embolism is an obstruction of a blood vessel, and this is bad. There are kind of two types of embolisms, as far as I'm aware. There's a gas embolism. Your body, your circulatory system, it's a closed system. So if oxygen is introduced to it, like a little air bubble, eventually it'll just reach a point where it can't go any further. And then similarly, you can have that uh, physically, not with oxygen, but a blood clot, right? So to make sure you don't bleed out, blood coagulates and creates basically a barrier to stop blood from getting out. And that barrier can basically sprout off, get stuck somewhere that it shouldn't be. And that's how you get an embolism and get owned. But with that out of the way, we can now continue to the blood draw. I'm probably gonna show a quick montage of me drinking my drinks and then we'll head right into it. Okay, I'm about four drinks in, White Claw Surges, they're like 8%, so I'm, I'm, I'm pretty fucked up. You'll also notice that this is the plastic fold-out chair I use for not only the ice cream video, also the salt water drinking video, and I have not sterilized this thing at all. Doing a blood draw, it is actually pretty straightforward. To start, I need to get a tourniquet going. 
So the purpose of the tourniquet to reduce venous return is what nerds would say. Veins is what brings blood back to the heart. We are not reducing our arm's ability to get blood into it. We're reducing our body's ability to get blood out. This is the blood bag with the needle covered up. Uh, there's a very specific type of blood bag that is sold. It has sodium citrate in it, which is an anticoagulant. It's to make sure that the blood doesn't clot up while it's being stored. Prep the area, make sure it's clean, and you want to wait for the alcohol to dry once you wipe it off. But as I was saying, the human body is not just a water balloon of blood. We don't just have blood free flowing everywhere. There are specific blood vessels that kind of take blood from the heart and move it around the body and then bring it back to the heart. And so what we're looking for is veins specifically, and while I won't bore you with all the different types of veins and things, we're going to be using this median cubital vein right here. I can feel it really good. Alcohol is dried, so you want to keep the bevel up when you insert it into yourself. You want to keep it at a 30 to 45 degree angle. Fuck me. Okay, <laughs> get some tape, and just like that. So you want to kind of mix the, the blood around a little bit to make sure that the sodium citrate kind of mixes in there. There is a little bit of blood on the table, <laughs> which I apologize for the squeamish, but that is how it goes, unfortunately. Uh, I'm going to place this on the floor so that gravity kind of helps me a little bit. Of all the different times that I've stuck something into myself to drain fluid out of me, this is probably my least favorite. Also, using my foot to massage a blood bag was not in my bingo card. Now, it should go without saying that you shouldn't try this at home, but obviously, I'm a professional. I'm doing this alone, right? Here's my bag of blood. One thing I did not account for or think about is how to stop the blood draw. Usually what people do is they just clamp it off and then they pull it out and it's no issue. I don't have a clamp, nor do I have an extra pair of hands. So I think we're just gonna have to basically tie a knot with the blood bag itself. Kind of something like this. If and when that's ready. Okay. I feel like that's good enough, so I'm going to actually clamp this off now. No different than kinking a hose. I pull the needle out of me, I'm bleeding a little bit, kind of bleeding a lot of it. That is an alcohol tape. That will hurt very bad if I do that. Okay. <laughs> and so that's the blood draw. Hold on, let me tape this down somehow. Okay. I think that's about as good as I'm, <laughs> I'm going to get it. Usually blood kits come with a... There you go. Blood kits come with a little way to protect the needle so you don't stick yourself again a second time on accident. Bleeding pretty profusely here. Do I still have the tourniquet on? Oh, that's the problem. There we go. Okay. Now everything is going to be fine. Oh, there's a lot of blood on the floor. <laughs> okay. So what you want to do is you want to make two knots and I'm just gonna cut in between these two knots. There, a little blood's gonna come out, but it's not a huge deal. And just like that, we have a blood bag, right? Simple as. Um, I, I've put the blood bag away. So like, does blood go in the trash or the recycling? Does anyone know? <laughs> okay, so blood stains. I'm learning, you know, in the TV shows when they talk about red wine and shit and blood, so blood stains. All right, noted. Okay, so I, have, I got a little fucking, I got a little blood on the carpet. Most of it's cleaned up. All in all, I'd consider it a success. All right, it's been a week. Look at that, that's fucking gross, ain't it? That's what happens when you just leave blood sitting out for a week and not do anything. That's all like the, the plasma and white blood cells and red blood cells, they, they separate it. But I think if you just kinda... 
There you go. Good as new. Like a like a shitty snow globe. Okay, so at first I didn't know how I was gonna do this because I need to hang this up on something. But as I was looking around the house, I noticed that there was a tiny little hook here. I don't know what it was there for, but I can just kind of. There you go. Huh? Fancy stuff. To set up an IV, I got a little administration set here. You can just pop this open. You can just kind of spike it with any of these prongs here. There's two prongs right here. Or outputs, I don't even know what you call them. But you get one of these bad boys. It's all sterile and stuff. There's a little needle. There's the stopper right here. This is to stop blood flow. And then here's the part that you attach to the, that goes inside of you. Normally for blood draws, in like hospital settings, they'll have two of these. One is for the blood and the other one's for saline. You don't need the saline for whole blood, plus the saline will dilute it anyway, so we don't kind of want that either. Wait a minute. Oh, fuck. The blood's too diluted. Oh my god, it's not gonna work. Stupid, stupid, stupid. So firstly, I'd like to say that when I had this video idea, I had been drinking every day for like a few weeks to build up tolerance to make sure that I could kind of safely do the blood draw while under the influence. So it did not occur to me the blood dilution would be a factor, but basically in the simplest terms, based off some rough calculations, I have about 8,500 milliliters of blood in me and the blood bag is 450 milliliters. Even if we generously give myself four and a half white claw surges, that'd be 54 fluid ounces at 8% alcohol volume, my BAC or my blood alcohol content, which is how you measure kind of how drunk you are, would have only been 0.16. After you do a blood draw, your volume of blood gets replaced after 24 to 46 hours. You then have a 450 milliliter blood bag, which is only 0.16 BAC, which means that of the 450 milliliters, only 72 of those milliliters are actually alcohol. You're now taking the 500 milliliters of blood. So now your total blood amount in your body is 9,000 milliliters. And there's only 72 milliliters of alcohol in your body which means that your blood alcohol content would be like 0 0.008 <laughs> so you'd basically need multiple blood bags to feel something <laughs> Luckily, I got a bunch of blood bags. No, I'm just kidding. It's not <laughs> it's not really feasible to do this on my own. I still have dreams, I still have hopes. Um, the issue is, is that even if you account for the volume difference, you're losing too many red blood cells. So the volume gets replaced after a day or two, but the red blood cells takes weeks to replace. So to kind of offset that in the, 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 the business, the people in the back are gonna have to be like really, really drunk, probably closer to like 0.3 BAC. People in the front get their blood drawn and then that can actually go to like Red Cross and to save people's lives and stuff and then they can take the alcoholic blood and then put that into normal people and it, it should offset the dilution a little bit better it's probably not something even if it was to become a reality and we get through all the fda and all that shit it's probably not something that'll get you like fucked up fucked up it'll probably just be like a pre-game thing and it might might only work for like small women hot chicks which i mean what else do you run a business for if not just for the hot chicks so um, if you're a small hot chick, come on down. And if you're a big hot chick, you can come to me personally. I'll buy you a drink. <laughs> Stupid.